All right, Kevin asks, uh, Hi Bo, I am in contract for a condo unit. I was pre-approved for a loan, but when the lender found out it was a non-warrantable condo, they said they couldn't do the loan and they rescinded the pre-approval. Can you explain to me if there are any financing options? I was buying this as a short-term rental investment property. Thank you. All right, great. So we get this a lot. So a non-warrantable condo could mean, it means it basically is not on the uh, Fannie approved condo list because maybe the occupancy levels, maybe the reserve study, it just was never approved. And typically what I see the most is that uh, the occupancy levels, there's a couple reasons why it would be considered a non-warrantable condo. Uh, maybe there's one owner that owns a majority of units, over 10% of the units, That's that makes it a non-warrantable condo. Um, there's there's an occupancy, like so if it's, if it's mostly investor occupied, that makes it a non-warrantable condo. If there's certain uh, lawsuits, uh, if there's a lack of reserves, all these things contribute to the non-warrantable condos. Now, um, Assuming there's no liability or uh, uh, litigation on the on the condo, um, then there are a lot of non-bank or non-bank non-QM lenders that do DSCR loans that you can get financed. So um, the difference would be is that condos are typically like a five percent haircut of what the maximum LTV versus a single-family home. So maybe I could do eighty percent on a single-family home or seventy-five on a non-owner occupied single family home. Maybe I could do 70% if it was a condo, right? Now, if it's a non-warner condo, you're more at like 60 to 65% leverage. So yes, they're financeable. Um, we have a lot of issues if it's considered a condo tell, but that's a different subject. But non warrantable condos are financeable. You're taking a little bit of a haircut. Um, the best thing to do in the future is, is, is just know that uh, when you're looking at a condo, you want to make sure it's warrantable. Your realtor probably should have told you this and maybe they didn't know, maybe they're new, they're green. It's the first thing you should look at because you probably wouldn't have bought it if you knew you would have to come in with more money. So, or maybe you would have, but the point is, is that now that you know 60 to 65% leverage, you're going to buy it as a short term rental. You can do a non QM loan. Um, and there's on a non QM lenders, there's lenders that do, they would do a rental survey and look at it as a long-term rental, but we know you're in a short-term rental, but if it would qualify there, it opens up the door to more of these DSCR lenders. If it's just pure projection based, meaning that the only way that debt coverage, that the income would qualify would be from a short-term rental, then you're limiting it to a smaller buy box of lenders that will do it. Either way, we can figure it out one way or the other. And all you have to do is book a call below and I'd be happy to discuss. Thanks for the question. Hi, this is Bo Eckstein, host of the Investor Financing Podcast. Are you a real estate investor with properties and you're trying to figure out how to refinance or grow your existing real estate business? Need some clarity and a game plan for moving forward? I'm offering a free strategy call where we dive deep on your real estate investing goals. I'll help you come up with a strategic finance plan that will help you get to where you want to go. Whether you've got a portfolio of 30 properties, or you're starting out with your first property. I have a framework that has helped many investors grow. If you're interested, book a call below in the Calendly link. Hey guys, Bo Exine here. If you enjoyed what you saw, please subscribe to this channel. We talk all things financing. I've been in the lending industry for over 20 years and I'm happy to answer your questions and provide great content.